It's information system based in computers. It's built of five major components. Anybody remember a component? Hardware. Hardware. Software. Uh, data. data. People. Methods. Methods. Rock it in. Man. Give yourself a hand. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> and there are two types of data that we use in GIS. Raster, Raster and vector. vector. Yes. OK. So that's GIS broken down in a nutshell. Comprised of five different things. It uses two types of data. And the whole intent of it is to answer questions so that you can take actions. The second kind of portion of the program here is to look into uh, addressing that we do at the county. And addressing is interesting to me because it's very cultural and, and, and it's also systematic. So I wanted to introduce you to addressing, which is something I know a little about. So first we're going to discuss what is an address. An address is a collection of information presented in a mostly fixed format used for describing the location of a building, apartment, or structure, generally using political boundaries and street names as references, along with other identifiers such as house or apartment numbers. You got all that? So it's a collection of information in a fixed format describing a building or structure, and it, or it's used for describing a building or structure, and it's usually described by a street, a political boundary, such and such. So the history of addressing. If you think about it, addressing is a relatively new concept. Back in Babylonia, nobody had an address. This is new. Um, early addresses were only as early as the 15th century, and those weren't even real addresses. That was more rich people kind of keeping track of the land they owned. It wasn't to help people find things. It really wasn't until the 18th century I mean, that blew me away when I realized that. That's, that's really new. 18th century, when we first started addressing things. But never mind. I see your eyes glazing over. So instead, we'll do a pop quiz instead of learning about the history of addresses. Because I see you. I see you don't think this is relevant or fun. But it is. You will love addresses by the time we're done. Oh, and remember when I said I wouldn't quiz you about this stuff? I lied. I'm a fibber. Fibber McFibbington. You should throw down it back at him. Tell him to take the quiz with you. See how he does. All right, so everybody has your quiz sheet. Everybody has put your name on it. Everyone is super stoked for this. Oh, come on, come on. It could be fun. <laughs> So here's a trick. You got your sheet of paper. Write it down. I'm going to give you an address. I'm going to tell you an address, and you are going to tell me the significance of the address, the people, or the significance of the address when you see it. And zip zip zip. There'll be no chit chat chat. You just write it down on your paper and keep going. So, first address: 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Why is that address important? Who lives there? What you got? Write it down. Mm -hmm. it, you, can, you can tell me that, that there's a person who lives there or that's got some other significance. So this address will either be the address of a person or it'll be a significant address for another reason. All right, number two, for Privet Drive, Little Winjean, Surrey. Why is that significant? Who lives there? Or Privet Drive, comma, I see some of you. I see some of you. 263 Prinzengracht in Amsterdam. Why is that significant? Number 10 Downing Street, London, England. Number 10 Downing Street in London, England. 
really a shocking amount of black stair blank stairs. All right, we'll keep going. 221B Baker Street, also London, England. Who lives there? Eleven Wall Street. What significant thing is there? What is significance? I'll give you a hint. That one's not a person. It's an item of significance. Eleven Wall Street. New York City. Okay. Number seven. One two four Conk Street, Bikini Bottom, Pacific Ocean. Who lives, who lives there? Come on. <laughs> Number eight, been a long point in Sydney, Australia. What famous structure? I'll give you a hint on that one. What famous structure is there? Okay, take a last look at this one. Fill in any of your questions. We're going to keep moving because it's a game of speed and excitement. All right, number nine. What is it? 1060 West Addison Street, Chicago. You'll know it for many reasons, but one of them could be your film fan. 1060 West Addison Street, famous address. 3734 Elvis Presley Boulevard in Memphis, Tennessee. What could that be? No way to know. No way to know. 14 Maple Street, Mayberry, North Carolina. 14 Maple Street, Mayberry, North Carolina. Seven forty two Evergreen Terrace in Springfield. Springfield. Three fifty Fifth Avenue, New York. Three fifty Fifth Avenue, New York. I'll give you a hint. That one's a structure. What famous structure? Number fourteen, Forty Two Wallaby Way, Sydney. Who lives there? Why is that significant? Sixteen thirty Revelo Drive in Sunnydale, California. Sunnydale. Fourteen oh seven Gray Malkin Lane, Salem Center, New York. Oops, sorry. All right, last chance on those. Look through them. Anything? Anything? Scribbling? All right, keep going. Ah, who lives at that 1007? I'm so sorry. Mountain Drive in Gotham. Who could possibly live in Gotham? Twenty-three eleven North Los Robles Avenue, apartment four A, apartment four A in Pasadena. Who lives there? Three hundred one Cobblestone Way in Bedrock. 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 Okay. Nine thirty three Hillcrest Drive, Beverly Hills, California. Nine thirty three Hillcrest Drive, Beverly Hills. Bonus questions. If you can tell me who lives in galactic sectors, Z, Z, nine, plural, Z, alpha, mostly harmless. <laughs> and who can tell me what, as your second bonus question, we would find if we went to the second star to the right and straight on till morning.
All right, last chance for the slides. Do you want to take them up or do you want me just to go through the answers? No, no, we're gonna take them up. All right. Well, do, you, do you want them to grade it while we go? We'll check your answers and we'll take them up. Hey, hope you did well. Thanks. Make your grade. Okay, are they, are they self grading? Are, are they yeah, self grading? They can self grade. They're pretty reliable. All right. We're trusting you, man. We're trusting you. So and I'm sure you guys rocked it, and you know, I'll let you start yelling it out. 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue is White House. the White House. That's right. Four privet. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this is for the history buffs. 263 Princeton Guard, Amsterdam. What? An important person. Who? Anne Frank. Anne Frank. Who said it? Absolutely, it's Anne Frank. <laughs> Number ten, Downing Street. Downing Street. Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Two twenty one B Baker Street. Sherlock Holmes. Absolutely. Eleven. New York Stock Exchange. Who said that? All right, that's exactly right. The New York Stock Exchange, the center of American commerce. Eleven Wall Street. Oh, I'm sorry. Who lives in a pineapple deep under the sea? Come on. And if you were wondering, Squidward is 122 Conk Street. What is that? Been a long point. Sydney, Australia. Sydney, Australia. That's correct. Who knew this one? Anyone? Nope. Uh, it was mentioned in the Blues Brothers movie. That's just the address they always gave out because it's not a real address. It is Wrigley Field. Graceland, and I would accept Elvis Presley as well. But Graceland was really what I was hoping for. Who lives here? Ding. Mayberry, North Carolina, famous fictional town. Come on, somebody got this. Who got this? The Simpsons. Empire State Building, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, because everybody knows two addresses, your own and 42 Wallaby Way. Ah, who is from Sunnydale? Not even you? Betrayal. Betrayal. When we old school, Buffy. Come on. Ah, come on, who knew this one? Somebody who, I need a comic book or movie fan. Michael Jackson. Not Michael Jackson. James Bond. That, that's the, uh, the center. Thank you, yes. And along the same theme, who lives? The Dark Knight. Yeah, technically. Ah. Come on, this this was current. I actually threw you a bone here. Ding! That's right. It all started with the Big Bang. They've mentioned it in three episodes. They live in the town of Bedrock. Who's here? 
Nobody? All right, perhaps it would have helped if I'd given you the zip code with this one. Oh, that's right, the Walsh family from our favorite television drama. Who got it? I don't know. I don't know if I got it right. You did. Just say it. Just say it. No, I, I don't want to. I don't know. Can you just? Trick question. It's all of you because that's the description of Earth from Douglas uh, Adams. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one. What would you find if you were here? Peter Pan. Peter Pan. You would go to Neverland. <laughs> You want to take them? Oh, okay. Whew. You guys are wearing me out. All right. Ooh. Okay. So seriously, wait, 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 wait. Okay, and we're back. Um, so what, what, where were those addresses from? What, 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 what were they? They were political addresses, right? 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, 10 Dowling Street. Where else were they from? Uh, pictures, TV, literature. So whether it's real, whether it's imaginary, addresses are important, and we think about addresses all the time. And this is important to you because, honestly, addresses they are a defining characteristic of us all. They define you just like your hair, your eyes, your height. It tells something about you. Um, addresses are also used as an important part of your personal identification. Think of all the things that are based on your home address, where you vote, how you, what's on your driver's license. That address is everywhere. Um, if you really still don't believe addresses are important, you know, think about it. The British call it postcode envy, where they talk about you know, wanting to live in a better neighborhood and, um, or a Park Avenue address here in America. So we, we think about addresses a lot. And your address tells me something, like if you're from Caribou Port and Reindeer Road and Deer Drive, if I see that on a piece of paper, I'm going to guess that these three might be in the same subdivision. That's probably a fairly new subdivision because those have kind of trendy names that are all to a theme. So your address tells me something about you and who you are near or with. Oh, if you tell me your address is Oak Street, now you have my attention. That's kind of a primordial address. Does anybody here live on Oak Street? Nope, because that's usually one of the first streets in the city. So there's probably one way up and coming that's this big. So it tells me you live in an older part of town. And if that's Charleston, South Carolina, it tells me you live in a nice old part of town. So addresses can tell people a lot about you. And if you still don't think that's true right here in Forsyth County, look at this map carefully. And at this point, <clears throat> giant disclaimer, giant disclaimer, I am a county employee. You are looking at United States zip codes. Nothing to do with me, not a thing. So as just an ordinary person, when I look at this map, I cannot help but see you're seeing it, right? Down at the south end? Every other zip code is this giant, big, beautiful blob, big blobs next to each other. Blah, 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 except donut. Anybody know what that is? That's Duluth, right in the middle of Forsyth County. So somebody got the federal government change of policy so that they could say they had a different address than coming. So right here in Forsyth County, people are all up in the business about what your address means. But addressing why? Why? Why is she even talking about this? Why is it important? Addressing is very important. Uh, it helps you. It helps you get home, school, home school, Starbucks, wherever you want to go. Um, it's also very important for emergency service. It saves your life. If I know where you are, I can send a fire truck. If I know where you are, I can send an ambulance. So addresses are critical for emergency services. And they're also critical for 
commerce, which is actually most of the driving factor behind addressing. If I know where you are, I can send you supplies, I can sell you something. Um, if you can tell me where you are, you can make me bring you pizza. So your address is important to you to get goods and services. Oh, sorry, I forgot, government. <laughs> Governments also kind of think addresses are important because it improves our management ability and it increases our revenues. If we know where you are, we can get you water and electricity and emergency services. If we know where you are, we can also tax you, right? Okay, we're gonna do just a little bit of history, but it's very interesting, I promise. So American addressing, when, when do we start doing this? Technically, the English had a little bit of a system when we were colonies, but that was mostly like they would send it to the, the common house in one of the big colonies in Virginia. So not everybody had an address and didn't really help people. Um, what happened next? Big deal, kind of a big deal, the American Revolution. So suddenly, we're our own country now. Suddenly, we're fighting the British, we're in a war. Suddenly, people want information. And actually, once again, it comes back to commerce. You'd think it'd be about the military, and it kind of was. It's really about the journalists, because you want to know what's happening. Are the British winning? Are we winning? Am I British? Am I American? What's going on? So you want to buy a newspaper. So the journalists were all hot and heavy up in Philadelphia back in the day to get these buildings and homes addressed so they could sell their product. So. Beginning around 1805 in the United States, that's when our home numbering system began. And, and again, for us even, this was really started out in the urban areas, like think Philadelphia, it's where things are happening. Um, we kind of inherited the European model, which is interesting. The, the Europeans at that point realized, oh, what else is happening around this time, especially in Europe? Kind of a big deal. That's it, the Industrial Revolution. Love that guy. <laughs> so uh, once again, it's about money. Industrial revolution's happening. People are getting wealthy. People now want to keep track of that wealth. They want to have you bring stuff to them and spend that wealth. Um, so Europe starts pushing this addressing system and they start going. And you can see the traditional Euro European style is odd numbers on the left even numbers on the right, and you just count. There's a house that's number one, there's a house that's number two. So you're just going up and down the street, giving everything a number. Um, and there's a little bit of a struggle in Europe because remember, how old's Paris? You know, how old's London? You know, these things are a billion years old. So they're having to kind of retrofit these addresses in, they're make, trying to make these systems work. While in the United States, we got it figured out, we're the new kid, so we start planning. Planning is key when it comes to addresses because it makes all the difference in the world. If you look at Washington, D.C., planned it out of Philadelphia, that was our first nation's capital. This is what we have now. It was very well thought out, and they thought it out in a grid system. They numbered the streets consecutively, either with letters or with numbers. And the diagonal streets are named after the thing has states. states. And those are even mostly in alphabetical order too. So the whole thing, when you're there, you can figure out where you're going. If it's, you know, 1000 C Street, you know, you're going to the 10th block and then to C Street. So the addresses make sense. It's like a little grid pattern. It guides you to where you're going. So when they planned out DC, they planned out the streets. As we mentioned before, streets aren't the only part of the address. It's your address number. We talked about the European style, top left. There was another European style that's very popular, uh, especially in the outskirts of London, or England, the more rural areas, and it's bizarre. They go up one side of the street and then down the other. The problem with that is, wouldn't it be kind of hard if you're looking for a number in the middle? You, you don't really know where it's gonna land, so it's, it's not as predictable. And most of us now go with this bottom idea, which is it's not the house on the street. It's the range of the street. So if the street is from 6,000 to 7,000, and it's a mile long, well, the house in the middle is gonna be 6,500. So you break it down by location. And what do you think drives that mathematical formula down there for making addresses? Probably have one in your car. 
probably have one on your phone. GPS, because now we have the computers that are predicting. So let's say we build new houses. Your data isn't always up to date. I mean, we don't have those actual buildings. But if you tell me your address that you want me to go to is 6,500, I know I just have to go to the street and go to the center of it, right? So now we have a predictable address that we can model with. Oh, house numbers. Think of your house. Where is your house number? Does anybody have a house number on their actual home? Used to? It doesn't happen so much anymore. <clears throat> used to, everyone had it on their actual building. It was usually on a little black box by your front door. It's about this big. And what went in that little black box? Your mail, because it was the little postal guy out walking around every house dropping off the mail. Yeah, because, well, think about it. It was, what, 1805? So you had people walking around, and you had a couple of horses, maybe. So, yeah, it didn't have to be very complicated. Um, so now your numbers have moved out to the street on the mailbox. Why is that? Right, male people are driving cars now, and also, who else is driving cars? Are you guys driving cars yet? All right. So, so when you're driving your car, you want to be able to see those addresses too. So you want them out front where you can see them. Also, typically, numbers are larger. If you go to an old historic area, look at the house numbers. They're not particularly big. You know, but now if you see an actual house number on a house, it's like a two and a half foot number sitting out there so you can see it from the road while you're going 50 miles an hour. Oh, and commercial addresses. Think about how big they make their addresses. They want you to know where they are. Okay, so to identify addresses, um, we're going to look at three major components. It's the street name itself. And when you're thinking about street names, you want them to be unique. Because how helpful is it to have 53 Peachtree streets? Not helpful. And you want them to be patterned because that makes them predictable. Um, when I moved to Forsyth County, I was having a, I'm like, I just don't get it. I'm not, you know, I was having trouble getting around. I finally realized, yeah, there's no grid system. There are no street names. People just name streets as they wanted. So if you tell me you're on Elk Street, that's just Elk Street. Like, <laughs> I, I can't in my mind picture anywhere in the county that would be. Whereas like we talked about DC where they planned it out. So if you tell me, you're at 10,000 C Street, I need to go to the 10th block in C Street and I can find your house. Um, I'm actually from Gainesville, Florida. Gainesville, Florida is the same way. It's on a grid system. Everything is numbered. Uh, avenues run north south, roads run east west. So everything about an address tells me something about how to get there. So it's completely predictable, really easy to find stuff. Why do you think cities like Gainesville, Florida and Washington, DC put such a major thought and planning and effort into these predictable addresses. What do you think is driving them? Commerce to a point. There's a lot of people go there. Yes. Think about Gainesville, Florida, home of the University of Florida. So every year, 20,000 new people show up. If it was Forsyth County, you'd have 20,000 people just driving around in circles because there's no way to tell where you need to go here. But you get all those new students in every year. They even spray paint the road ranges at the beginning and the ends of the roads to help people. Um, in Washington, D.C., think about it. You not only have tourists coming in, but think of all the people from different countries who are coming there to do work with our federal government. So to have something that's easy and predictable makes Washington work. It's, it's very important to them to keep those addresses going so we can keep commerce and business going. So street names, parts of the address, they need to be unique. It's better if they're patterned. Uh, house numbers, think about the size, the style. Um, are they gonna be just numerically based? Are they gonna be calculated into that road range? So house numbers as part of your address tell you something. And street types, we talked a little bit about this. Gainesville, Florida, you know, avenues only run north-south. Roads only run east-west. You know. What's a way? What's a court? Does that tell you any information about the address? If I say it's a court, do you know what? You know, here in Forsyth County, you don't really. But other places, it, it could tell you something.
And I know I've talked a lot about American addresses because well, that's where we are. It's more interesting in some respects because it relates to us. But I also think addressing around the world is very interesting because it's very, very different. If you go to Japan, streets aren't named. You're not going to get any information about a location off a street name. They just don't name them. What they have are municipalities that they break down into smaller units that they break down into blocks. So now you have a block of houses. And in that block of houses, so you've got your municipality as a number, your block is a number. The houses that go around, they are numbered by the year they were built. So it's oldest to newest. So number one might be next to number 47, which might be next to 23, which might be next to four. Can anybody think of why they would do that? They're right at the bottom. It's a culture that really respects um, age and wisdom. So the oldest houses are the most respected and they keep the numbers, the lowest numbers. So it's very culturally based and very respectful it's completely incomprehensible. If you go to Japan, you have to do what the locals do. If you go to a new place, you go to the police station and ask the police officer, I'm trying to find this house, how do I get there? Because there, there's no way to predict it. You have to have somebody who has knowledge of that area help you find it. When you look at China, China, uh, its whole addressing system is based on the fact that it is very um, respectful of the compass and the compass points, the center points and the cardinal directions. So, you know, even the name China means the center. That's their whole culture, not the whole culture, a big part of the culture is based on this. And so all your streets are going to be divided into east or west or north or south. They start at this central point and then they go out. And so your numbers go out with them. And then as you go on the street signs, it'll tell you what quadrant of the city it's in, north, south, east, west, underneath it. So as you walk around the city, if you know the system, you actually know where you are not only on the block, but in the great scheme of the whole city. So it's, it's very interesting. And 10 points to Gryffindor, if you could tell me who invented the compass. No, not quite. <laughs> but it, it was a Chinese man named Quinn. Anyway, the Chinese invented the compass, so I guess it makes sense that they would have all of their stuff based on this concept. And if you even want to go look at Europe, Paris. Paris is very interesting. You can see that they want to make sure, you know, it's kind of a thing that people talk about, you know, Parisians being very proud of their city. But if you go to name a street, they have all these conditions. Like if it's a big road, it has to have a big, great name that will be remembered. Or if it's a street that, buys, that goes by a church, it's got to be named after a saint or a famous, you know, French preacher. Um, neighborhoods around industrial areas. Those streets are named after famous French industrialists or inventors. Uh, and it just goes on and on. Uh, astronomers for by astronomy places and, and, and teachers. It's, you, know, you can see where they're just trying to inject more and more of their own culture, just even into the street name. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up. Hopefully, give you something to think about with addresses. Um, interesting, they're recent. Very new in America, like I said, pretty much the American Revolution kicked us off. Uh, they're developed primarily for commerce, emergency services, and for the government. Um, and addressing is fundamentally a part of the cultural identity of, of a country and of an individual. And ideally, it helps if addresses are predictable, but they're meaningful.